Everyone loves woodworking tips, so I'm thinking of doing a regular video series that feature my favorites. Each episode will give you five short tips, tricks, and simple jigs, which you can tuck away in your brain box for when you need them. I think we'll call this series Weekend Woodworking Tips. We'll release new episodes periodically and just let the tips add up over time. This time we have an idea for edge sanding boards, a simple miter jig, a saw guide you may never have considered, some magnetic snippers, and a handy helper for those less than handy clamps. I'll link to each of them in the video description below so you can skip ahead if you need to. And I'll also link to a playlist where we'll keep this and all future episodes handy. Now let's get started. To glue narrow boards into a panel, you must have perfectly straight and square edges if you hope to eliminate gaps in your seams. Sometimes a table saw just doesn't do the job well enough, and you may not own a power jointer. But do you own a four foot level? A level's edge is straight and it's square, the two factors you need for a jointer. Attach some strips of 80 grit sandpaper to the edge. If you don't have adhesive backed paper, you could cut strips from regular sanding sheets and attach them with spray glue. Now clamp your board to your bench top and use the level to sand the edge both straight and square at the same time. If you think it's a pain to remove and attach sandpaper every time you need to joint an edge, then just watch yard sales for another good used level. You can have a dedicated hand jointer for a few bucks, or you can make something similar out of wood, but then you might need a jointer to straighten it. If you own a bench top or stationary sander, you can make a simple jig for tuning miters and cross cuts. Cut out a triangle with one 90 degree corner and one 45 degree corner. Then attach it to a piece of quarter inch plywood with two parallel edges. You now have a very simple but effective angle jig that may be attached to your disc sander or your edge sander or even a multi sander. When you install it, use a couple business cards to create a small gap between it and the sanding surface so you won't eat up your jig over time. Clamps hold it in place. You may use the same jig for 45 degree cuts and for 90 degree cuts by merely shifting its position. I saw this tip in the latest issue of Wood Magazine and immediately smacked myself in the forehead for not having thought of it before. It's a handy way to hold your workpiece and guide your saw for making a cross cut by hand using a simple wooden screw clamp. Align the clamp with your cut line. A square will help make it more precise. Tighten it down and secure the lower jaw in a vise. Now the upper jaw becomes a guide to keep your cut both plumb and square while the clamp holds it in place. I like to use a pole saw with a little finger pressure on the plate. A western style hand saw will work fine as well. You can even put a piece of tape on the side of the jaw to lubricate the saw and help protect the clamp. If you ever find yourself trimming the end of a protruding nail, you know that little bit of metal can fly anywhere. I know a guy who scratched his cornea with one of these. While there's no substitute for safety glasses, a rare earth magnet can help you keep track of the offcut. Just place it on the side of the pliers, right next to where the nail will protrude. When you clip, it should stick. Small bar clamps like these are inexpensive, so you can buy a bunch of them for times when you need a lot. But they don't feature those little clutch plates that other clamps utilize to keep the jaws closed as you tighten the handle down. This means the jaw can easily slip as you apply clamping pressure. The easiest solution is to just use two hands to hold the clamp closed until the pressure locks the jaws in place, but you don't always have two hands free. In that case, you may add a rubber band or two to pull the jaws closed for you and keep them that way as you tighten the clamping pressure. That's it for this edition of Weekend Woodworking Tips. See you next time. I've been using DuraGrit carbide sanding products for years, and I still haven't worn out the first ones I bought. If I have a rough edge to smooth, a corner to chamfer, or a curve to shape, more often than not, I'm reaching for one of these cleverly designed tools. It's one of those workshop secrets I wish I'd discovered long ago. Check out the link below this video to see for yourself. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe, and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up, or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nub's Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.